So all of this you see here, this is what is keeping me alive. This video is going to serve three purposes. The first one would be to give you guys more insight into my life. Aren't I nice? The second reason is to show off my Chewbacca slippers. Chewbacca slippers. And the third reason is to provide more education about organ donation and what it's like to be a transplant patient. For example, a lot of people will come up to me often and say, hey, I heard you got your heart transplant, and I say thank you. And they're usually followed by something like, oh, so you're good now, you know, you probably just take medicine, you're good. I'm like, well, yeah, I take medicine, but it's more than just that. It's an ongoing and most, most likely a lifelong battle that every transplant patient knows about and is aware of. So after you get your transplant, it's not just, you know, you get to go home and everything is fine and dandy. No, you are riddled with appointments for the next year and then you have to take a crazy amount of pills, especially right after the surgery. I was downing maybe close to 50 pills a day. Uh, so you're looking at easily like over 300 pills in a week. And that's just disgusting. But as a transplant patient, I don't really have much of a choice but to comply with what my doctor prescribed for me. And of course, it works. But of course, after a long use of being on, like a long time of using this medication, you can have some side effects. So really, I'm just gonna show you guys what is in my pill box and what my medication, my at-home care system, how it works. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is my handy dandy pillbox. You know how some people have their little black book? Well, I have my little black box of drugs. And as you can see, there are seven sleeves for seven days of the week. But you'll see that there are some empty spots because my doctor just called me to tell me to modify some dosages for different parts, uh, for different medications. So. That's what I'm kind of doing at the moment. I'm reorganizing. Uh, but as you can see, it's well organized and there are a lot of pills for each day, you guys. I mean, granted, right after surgery was the heaviest dose of medication, but it's a good 30, 35 pills a day. Up here at the top, always important to have a list of medication. Not only do I have my medications listed, but I also have them charted, which makes filling up the pill box so much easier. So if you're a transplant patient, or if you're just a patient who has to deal with a lot of medication like I do, definitely have this done. It makes it easier if you have to make any changes or if you just need to have some on the spot knowledge about your med list like I do. I have a ton, I haven't memorized, but still important to have. Okay, and next we're going to, I'm gonna show you guys basically where these pills come from. They come from a pharmacy, but you know, I'm gonna show you guys the stash and I'm reaching for more of my medication. And um, I'll go ahead and explain what these are and what they do. All right, let's get into the medicine itself. So I'm gonna do these out of order, uh, not respective to the time I take them, but more to, to let you guys better understand how this works. So as you can see in my hand here is basically the center of my medication. Uh, this is the immunosuppressive part of my therapy. The yellow pills are tacrolimus and the brown pills are sirolimus. Now they sound similar because they do similar things. The tacrolimus, the yellow pills, they both, well they both suppress my immune system and what that does is it allows my new heart, the transplanted heart, to be accepted by the body and to reduce my chances of rejection. With any new organ, a patient is, um, is at risk for rejection organ rejection and eventually organ failure if it's not taken care of in time. So this is basically what is keeping me alive. But because it suppresses my immune system, that means that I am at risk for other diseases, bacterial infections, and even cancers. And that's where the rest of the, me uh, the medicine comes into play. And as you can see in here, apart from the section I just showed you, I take the tacrolimus more than once a day. I take it twice a day to keep that tacrolimus level where it should be. 
Now moving up to the early morning part of my regimen, those two red and white pills you see on the left and the right side, that is called Crescemba. And as you can see in this box over here, it's a uh, has, gets its own special box and it's a pain to get. Each pill is individually packed. I don't know, there must be some reason, some life-saving reason as to why they they package these and these bulletproof blister packs, but it's a pain to take out and I hate it. But it's important. Crescemba is an antifungal medication, so with the immunosuppression, I am I am vulnerable to fungal infections as well as bacterial infections, and this is what keeps the fungus infections at bay. I think I'm supposed to be coming off of this soon, so there's good news there. No more blister packs and cutting myself with the edges trying to take a damn pill. Okay, so to make this easy, I laid out all of my morning medications, and I'll just go through each one and explaining what they do. So the first one, this pink one right over here, this is called metoprolol. Metoprolol is a beta blocker, and to put it simply, it treats against high blood pressure and abnormal heart rhythms, and is usually given to um, patients who have suffered a heart attack and kind of keeps the heart from doing damage to itself over and over again. The second row of medication, the three pills that you see here, is prednisone. And prednisone is like a fix-all, anti-inflammatory, so many people have been on it drug. And it's probably the one of, it's like one of the worst out of everything that you see and this regimen is probably one of the worst. When I was on a higher dose of that, my face fattened up and I was having weird mood swings and you know, I wasn't going from crying to beating people up, but like I just got easily agitated and I was wired all the time and I had a crazy appetite, which wasn't too bad because I like food, but prednisone really had me messed up. The third medication in line is magnesium. It's an electrolyte and um, that's pretty much self-explanatory. But again, it's an aggressive medication because of just of what it is. It's an electrolyte and it doesn't sit well in my stomach, especially on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. The third one in line, the two shaded green pill is daltiazem. Daltiazem is to treat high blood pressure, just like the metoprolol, but this is more, uh, this is more just for high blood pressure. It's meant to keep my blood pressure on the lower side because of all the trauma that was done to my heart, especially after all the surgeries. Um, I honestly don't think that I really need it anymore, but doctor says to keep taking it, so I will. And the next one that looks like the magnesium is just aspirin. Aspirin is just to keep uh, blood from pooling up and it's not that great, not that great to explain its form. And finally, the last one is Valgon Cyclovir. It's a antiviral. So again, the prophylactics are meant to combat the immunosuppression onset by the tacrolimus. So Valgon Cyclovir to protect me from viral infections. So let's go through it. Make sure you guys are quizzed up and you guys are ready. First one, Metoprolol. These three pills here, prednisone, magnesium, daltiazem, aspirin, Valgon Cyclovir. You guys keeping up? All right, and finally moving on down to the bedtime medication. And we're gonna go ahead and skip the yellow pills, the tacrolimus, because we already talked about that. Okay, so for the bedtime meds minus the tacrolimus is pretty much, you'll see some similarities with the morning meds. So we have our magnesium again, so more stomach aches, our metoprolol to protect us from abnormal heart rhythms and high blood pressure, and Valgon Ciclovir to protect us from any viruses, airborne or not. And the only difference in the bedtime meds against the morning meds is the private statin. And if you're familiar with any statins, statins, uh, including private statin like this pale yellow pill here, is meant to control your cholesterol. Uh, with the the medications that I'm on can have an effect on my cholesterol. It's not saying that you know, I'm not eating my Cheerios or whatever cereal that claims to lower your cholesterol. It's just a way that all of these medications work together to make sure that everything is at the right balance. It's not whether you're taking enough of it, but whether your body can handle the medication and whether it's at the right balance. So 
Again, there can be discrepancies from patient to patient that can't handle these medications. Um, there are some substitutes for the medications in case they have an allergy or um, it just doesn't work with their system. But as you can see, there's a lot of detail that goes into prescribing medication. I know I'm grateful, but again, I wish I could do without it because taking all these pills is not only a chore and an extra job itself, but I mean, come on, if you've ever taken pills on an empty stomach, you know that it can give you just the worst feeling ever. So I think that pretty much does it for this video. I wanna thank you guys for allowing me to appear on your screen today. I think this video is going to serve as a great tool for transplant patients, soon to be patients, their family, their friends. It'll allow them to all be on the same page and it'll make their lives just that much easier, hopefully. But um, again, thanks for watching you guys. If you aren't already, make sure you guys subscribe and hit me up on Instagram, Fitness with AJ. I'll see you guys around soon.